Hi friends, this is Peter Swart from Grace Covenant Ministries and uh, I just want to say to you that uh, I am really excited about what God is doing right now in the earth and what God is doing in our lives. Uh, I was last weekend in Ohio minister uh, with in Pastor uh, Tommy and Shanda Miller's church um, in uh, uh, um, New Philadelphia. Ohio, uh, their church name is Legacy Church, and what an experience I had, what an open um, situation I was in with the uh, people whose hearts is open to the gospel and to the message of grace. And I preached on immortality, and uh, basically in the same lines uh, of the video that I posted on um, last week on YouTube. And there was people who were healed, uh, really beautiful. They were, I speak only one prophecy and it was very accurate, very accurate word of knowledge. And um, I have just decided that in this 2017 is a year where I begin to live from the spirit of life that is in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory, to relax and stand back and see what he do. Um, I am living in that place where Jesus says, um, I, the son can do nothing unless the father shows him. And um, uh, although it's small, um, uh, beginning stages of this, but people, you know what? The church, the body of Christ is in desperate need um, of signs, wonders and miracles, in desperate need of healing, of the power of God manifesting on a regular basis in the church. Now, I know that there is people who function out of um, logic, a human logic, out of their memory bank in their minds. And they are coming into the church with great teachings. But hey, you know what? Jesus, two thirds of his ministry was healing and signs, wonders and miracles. And he is an example to all of us. And I want to encourage you, um, uh, pastors and leaders out there, we have to equip the body of Christ for the work of the ministry. And uh, uh, last week I explained, um, knowing, that we are, uh, knowing that we are crucified with Christ out of Romans 7, uh, excuse me, out of Romans 6, I explained knowing that we are crucified with Him. I also explained last week out of Romans 8 where He says um, that the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in us, giving life to our mortal bodies, and that's where immortality comes in. Many people take this immortality message and put it in a future eschatology, end time eschatology, put it into a future event um, where uh, everything will just change. Right now, Christ is living in us. I want to tell you something. This reality where Paul say in Colossians 1, 26 and 1, 27, uh, that the mystery that was hidden for ages, which is now being revealed, to the saints, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I want to say to you, this whole message on Christ in you is still a mystery to many people. People are still coming into that full reality. I am growing into that. And I want to walk just where Jesus walked. Um, uh, I don't think that uh, I have to be careful that I don't contradict myself here. Uh, I want to walk as Jesus walked. Um, no, we do walk like him, even though we begin to hear the still small voice of, of his spirit in us. Um, we are going into uh, or maturing into, that's, that's the right words. We are maturing into this place where we come uh, to the reality of that. We can say the same thing. The son can do nothing unless the father shows him. Jesus is our example and our model. Paul is our example and our model. The early church is our example and our model. People are in need. People are sick. People have emotional issues. Uh, people are bound by, by doctrine. People are bound by uh, um, all kinds of addictions and things. And I want to encourage leaders and pastors uh, uh, there, you can't read four pages in the New Covenant and not see a miracle, as T.L. Osborne have mentioned it. So this is where I am uh, in my walk with God. This is where I am in this grace walk with God. Um, that uh, 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 we can say the same thing that Paul say, and not just quote it and say it's a wonderful scripture and it's something that's our memory bank, but it's, it's life in us. 
um, uh, that, uh, that there is too many of us speaking out or teaching out of our memory bank instead of preaching out of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus that is dwelling in us. And that's where we need to minister from. It may be sound a little bit hard, a little bit um, uh, coming over as um, unforceful. I'm not. Uh, I know that there is not one sign, wonder and miracle and healings uh, that will take place unless it is by the grace of God and the love of God. It, it, you, can't, you cannot force it, you cannot work it, you cannot do it in your own ability. And I have explained that last week, um, that we have this treasure in earthen vessel. This earthen vessel speaks of um, uh, this, this mortal body. The thing is dead, is co-crucified with Christ. The sin nature of Adam has been crucified. It's a, it's a knowing, it's a renewing of the mind. So that the excellence of the power be of God. Now that word in the Greek is hyperbole, uh, which means to cast over. Uh, so from the inside of us, the, 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 when we focus on the things which are not seen Christ in us and not the things that seen, and we rest in that faith, then he will cast over his life coming into the natural. Um, people, Jesus did not say just to make a nice statement when he said that you are a city on a hill, that you are the light of the world. We are illuminated from the inside. Yes, we are not walking around every day uh, as a light shining like a, a globe. No, we are illuminated in the inner man. And when the manifestation of the Spirit comes through prophecy, through healing, through signs, wonders and miracles, through the power of God, guess what? This is when Christ is glorified through us. Not us, Christ is glorified. Um, it, it, it draw the sinner, it draw the unbeliever to the reality. Um, I got so much to say today to you, but I want to start off by telling you a story. And uh, I was, uh, I had a real visitation in 1983 with, uh, by filling with the spirit on the inside of me. I don't want to stand still on that story. And uh, God spoke to me and uh, I, in my inner man, I had such an experience with God. And then I went to, to Bible school. Unfortunately, I had to go to a very religious, traditional Bible school because I could not speak English. Now, what is interesting is that I begin to build up a memory bank. And after two years, I was so, have so lost that uh, a place where I was walking ex in experience with Christ in me, with the Holy Spirit um, uh, leading and guiding me. And uh, one day I saw on the newspaper on a Sunday afternoon, just after church, I saw on a in, in a newspaper in South Africa, I saw um, this uh, huge news flash on the front page of a guy with the name of uh, Theo Wormerans, a pastor in South Africa. I can't remember the name of his church and he had quite a big church. And uh, they had photos and he was splashed open in the news and they say he's pro he professed to be a healer and uh, a science wonders and miracle man and they visited his church and nothing happened. And suddenly the Holy Spirit spoke to me through that newspaper and say, you need to go to that to his church. And I remember that night I went to his church and um, it, it was a huge crowd. I think there was quite about a thousand people in that auditorium. And I remember Theo Wormerans did not even preach. He made one statement in his sermon and he says, um, this was what he said. He said, uh, Jesus says, whatever you ask me, I will, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. And he says, this is a healing meeting. And I thought to myself, wow, either this man is very arrogant or very bold after this news all over the newspapers, criticizing him, breaking him down, showing him out as a, as a hoax, as a liar. And I remember that night he began to pray for people and I was sitting in the audience judging him and, 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 and saying, yeah, this is just lies. Um, there's no healing. 
look, that's a headache. Look, that's a stomach issue. Nobody can see nothing. And he walk uh, uh, in the front and the next moment he's pointing his finger at me in the crowd and he said to me, Sir, did you see a miracle in your life before? And I said, no. He said, come, I will show you tonight, you will see one. And I remember he had a word of knowledge and a man came up with a build up shoe. And I'm not talking about where people sometimes in the church and I did the same in the past hold people's legs up when they have back problems yes because of the muscle spasm it pulls the legs it pulls the hips and pray for them and the leg uh, legs straightened out and stuff because the spirit and, and there's healings through that i i don't want to judge any of these things and what is interesting is is that here come a man with a bolt up shoe and i don't want to exaggerate you but it was quite a big bolt up shoe uh, on, on on his one leg and he said to that man, sit down, and he asked him, do you believe that Jesus can heal you? And the man said, yes. And he picked his legs up and he said to him, say, I receive healing in the name of Jesus. And the next moment, his leg grow up, out, and he couldn't stand uh, or anymore. And he had to take out the bolt up shoe and both his feet was flat on the ground. And his leg literally grow out four to five inches. And I saw it with my own eyes and I was jumping around. Uh, it was the first time in my life that I see a true miracle. And it brought a huge change in my life that I realized there is more than where I am now. So signs, wonders and miracles really pull on your heart. But really pull people out to realize that God is real. People, we are the only people on this earth that have the resurrection power of God in us. We as believers, we are the only people who serve a God, who have risen from the dead, who have conquered death, health, disease, sickness, whatever you can call it, and sin. It's time for us in the body of Christ to begin to focus on the right focus, which is Christ in us, and ask the Holy Spirit to give us the full revelation. And living from that place is our source and our, and, 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 uh, 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 our very life, our only life. The kingdom of God have taken residence in you. You are not disconnected from heaven. You are not disconnected from God. In fact, the Bible says, He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. We are one spirit with God. I'm encouraging you with what I'm sharing with you. This immortality teaching is not something that me and you want to take into the future in a package, something wonderful is going to happen. This is now. Faith is now. Salvation is now. And I want to encourage you today with this reality. Immortality basically is, as I have explained last week, in, last week in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 12, death working in us. That means I am absolutely aware of the reality that I'm co-crucified with Christ. And then he said that death working in us, but life in you. And that's, the, that's the, a, a, a one verse that sums up immortality. What's going to happen in the future concerning your end, end time eschatology is not my business. I'm living now. I am enjoying God now. And right now I want to see His life manifesting. So immortality is for now. It is the very life of God coming and work in my mortal body, giving life to my mortal body. And some people would say, yeah, but what about that verses in Romans 8 where they say the whole creation, uh, Romans 8, uh, uh, from verse 17 right down to 23, I will take that subject on, on groaning in the spirit and suffering and what all those things really means in the new covenant context. But uh, uh, you know what? The whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's not a future event. It's now. Love manifesting, joy, peace. Signs, wonders, and miracles. If you are healed, there is no greater realization than that is a manifestation of God's love. It's not just to show power. It's the manifestation of God's love for human beings. 
So, <clears throat> the whole creation is groaning, waiting. They are subject to this hope to be delivered from the bondage that they are in. What bondage? They don't, they have not come to the realization, the revelation, the knowledge of the life of Christ in them. And we have that in us. So today I'm going on here in immortality and uh, I, I, I want the first verses that I want to bring to you, uh, um, to, to your attention, is where Paul said in uh, Galatians 2, uh, verse 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. There you are again. I am crucified with Christ. It is not I that live anymore, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And then he said, I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness comes through the law, Christ died in vain. To set aside the grace of God means that I go back into functioning, bringing the law, the, the performance-based life, behavior life, uh, bringing back the knowledge of, of, of the good and evil when Adam ate from that tree, bringing it back into my mortal body and into my mind. For the Bible says the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. The, life, the mind set uh, on the flesh is death, it's enmity against God. By the faith of God, and in chapter 3 he goes on, that faith is Christ in us. And in chapter 3 he goes on and I want to read it to you. He says, O foolish Galatians who has bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. What does he mean by that? When Paul was among them, Christ in his body, Christ was, his body was crucified to Christ. The previous, you must read it in the context. The previous verse says, I am crucified with Christ. It's not I that live anymore, but Christ live in me. So Paul demonstrated among them what it means to be co-crucified with Christ. Paul demonstrated among them what it means when a man is free of the law, because the law is the knowledge of sin, it's the strength of sin. And sin in the Greek is hamartia, which means to miss the mark, uh, to separate yourself from the quality of God's life. That's what hamartia means, to separate yourself from the quality of God's life. Just as Adam, when he ate from that tree, he separated himself from the quality of God's life. He separated him from the life of God that he was living in the eternal life. And he subject himself to labors and talking and hardships and annoyances. And Paul was an absolute example of someone who was free of that, a man who was full of grace, who was ab absolutely filled with the life of Christ, and it manifests through him, it come into his mortal body, he manifested immortality. So, if we go on here, and then he say, this only I want to learn from you, did you... Uh, this only, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now trying to be perfect in the flesh? See, there is the divining line. We begin in the Spirit and then we hear doctrine that take us back into the flesh. What can I do more to get God to bless me? What can I do to qualify to be righteous? What can I do to qualify? No, you're already qualified through the finished work of Jesus Christ. You're already good enough. You've been forgiven for eternity. God is so excited about you that he came and lived in you. And the only thing that holds you back is, the, is hamartia, the sin conscience. And then he goes on and I, this is the verse that I want to begin, bring to your attention in verse 5. He say, therefore he who supplies the spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? What is the hearing of faith? The hearing of faith is me hearing me coming, hearing the good news, revealing Christ in me, the gospel of glory being revealed to me, he, revealing Christ in me, Rev setting me free from being bewitched, setting me free from being foolishness. 
bringing me into grace where I rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ and his life begin to manifest through me. So he says, did you receive the spirit by the hearing or by the works of the Lord, the hearing faith? He who supply the spirit among you, does he do it by the works of the law or the hearing of faith? So in this context of, of being crucified with Christ, he talk about signs, wonders and miracles. In the context of immortality, he talk about signs, wonders and miracles. It is this life manifesting in our mortal bodies. Death working in my body, that means I know that I'm crucified with Christ, I'm co-crucified. My sin nature has been crucified with Christ. It's not I that live anymore, but Christ lives in me. He is my only life. He is your only life. That's the real man of you. There is a spiritual man inside of you. That is so awesome, people. This is the gospel, man. This is truly, truly the gospel. So if we look, if we look at some verses that I looked at last week, uh, um, then we see uh, uh, the first verse I want to read to you, and I, I've read it last week, I want to read it to you again, uh, is in 2 Timothy 1, 9 to 10. He says, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, not according to our works, there it's again, but according to His own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ. Jesus before time began. It was given to us in Christ Jesus. That, that has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light in the gospel. So Jesus had, had brought life and immortality. What does that mean? Right now, on the right hand of the Father sit a man. It's not a spirit. It's a body. It's a man who died. It's a man who risen from the grave. Remember, he said to Mary, do not touch me, for I am flesh and blood. I first have to go to my Father. So Jesus is, excuse me, I use the words again, flesh and blood. I'm flesh, flesh and bone. Jesus shed all his, all his blood for our sins. So right now, there is a glorified, immortal man sitting on the right hand of the Father. Why? So that we can identify with him because 1 John 4, 17 says, As he is, so we are in this world. As Jesus is right now. So right now, that immortal man, that immortality is working in my flesh, in my body. And that's, that is so beautiful. Jesus didn't even bring, he did not only bring life, but he bring life and immortality. That means death is working in me so that life can work in you. That means that there is a manifestation of the Spirit through me, healing you, setting you free. And all the body of Christ can function in that. I don't think we really make time to sit still in his presence and meditate on his life in us and his glory in us. Meditate on, on, on the resurrection power. Meditate on healings. Meditate on deliverance. <clears throat> and that, that is so good. So, so that is the first verse. The second verse I want to give you is in 1 Peter 1, 23. And, and, and I'm going to read today to verse 25. Because I want to show you here again. Having been born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible through the word of God, we live and abide forever. Now that word incorruptible, in the Greek, it is, and I, I don't know if I pronounce it right, is athatharsia. I hope I pronounce it right. And that word incorruptible and the word immortality is athatharsia in the Greek. It's the same word. So we talk about immortality. We are talking about incorruption. We are talking about the incorruptible seed which is Christ, of the living word of God, which is Christ. He is the seed of Abraham. And he is in us. And I believe that when you hear the true gospel, that you are forgiven for eternity, past, present, and future. When you hear the true gospel, that he has made you righteous. 
You come to that understanding that God got absolutely nothing against you. You awake to righteousness. And when you awake to righteousness, life begins to flow. Life is being released in you. And then life begins to work in you. And as you begin to set your mind on the life that's in you, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, and you function in that, and you, you stand in faith, believing in that life that's in you, then it will manifest in the natural. It will manifest through my mortal body. We will be illuminated from the inside out. This is, this is the gospel. It's so beautiful. Um, so, and then he goes on here and he says, uh, All flesh is as grass, and the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. So, so, so here is what uh, uh, Peter said. The flesh is like the grass. It's like the flower of the field. Today it, it looks beautiful and glorious. Tomorrow it's gone. You throw it in the fire and it's going to burn. The reality is the focus is not my flesh. The focus is the incorruptible seed, the word of life that is dwelling in me. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That word in the, in the Greek is logos. It's the logic of God. You want to understand the logic of God? Then you have to come to the conclusion that Christ is in you and Christ is your everything. Everything that you need is provided in Christ. It's beautiful. From here, where did Peter quote that verse from? He quoted out of the Old Covenant. And if you turn with me to Isaiah 40, and I, I got quite a number of verses that I read today, and I, I just want to go through these verses, and I want to encourage you of, out of this. So look here what he said. In Isaiah 40, from verse 1, we read, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare has ended. Well, man, I can preach so much just on that one statement that warfare has ended. Um, the war is really not the devil. Jesus defeated the devil 2,000 years ago. Although the enemy have a strategy and a plan that he, he, that he work against us, he wants to bring you back in subjection to functioning in the flesh and to labor and toil again, just like he tempted Adam. He, he, Adam and Eve were in the garden, just like he tempted Eve. He showed Eve, he deceived her by showing her that, there, well, there is a better plan if I eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I will be like God. <laughs> <laughs> which was a lie. They were already like God. And that's what the law does. That's what performance-based Christianity energy does. I will be like God. It looks, it looks in the flesh and from the senses that is coming against us, it looks very attractive. But God wants you to rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. He wanted Adam to rest in that plan. Living from the tree of life. And, 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 and that is, is, the, is the attack of the enemy. People think it is all kinds of warfare over cities and they wasted money and time on this. No, he's defeated. The, 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 the attack is very subtle. As he say in 2 Corinthians, he say, make sure that you are not, not deceived as Eve was deceived, that you fall out of the simplicity of the gospel. What is the, the simplicity of the gospel? The simplicity of the gospel is the work is done. Jesus has done it. That's the simplicity of the gospel. <laughs> um, uh, he says the warfare is over. He says that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. And that shows to the cross of Jesus Christ that the body of Christ were, or we as believers were included in him when he died on the cross. And he received double for our sins. That means he, he have took it all upon him and make sure that it is done away with. 
Now, let's go on here. And then he say here, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, he is prophesying here about John the Baptist who prepared the way for Jesus Christ. I honestly believe today that we are in that same place that through the message of grace, through the message of revealing who we are in Christ, showing that we are completely forgiven, through that message, we are preparing the way for Christ to manifest through the body of Christ. That's what I honestly believe. Now, if we go on here and then he say, uh, uh, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low and the crooked places shall be made straight, straight and the rough places smooth. I want to tell you something. A life under the law is like valleys and hills and crooked places and it's just a hard life. Then he goes on and he said, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now here in this context, he talks about the coming of Jesus. Right now, I want to say to you that we are busy doing the same thing. That Christ will appear through the body of Christ. That Christ will manifest through the body of Christ. Then he said, the voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? And he says, all flesh is grass and all its loveliness is like a flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. Now, when did the breath of God blows upon it? I believe that it happened on the cross when the Jesus took the flesh and he destroyed it on the cross and burned it brought an end to it and it also speak in this day and age that we are living where the breath of the holy spirit will come with revelation knowledge in us and it will blow away all the 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 the, 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 the independent life that we live uh, separate from the from the quality of god's life it will, it will blow away that mindset and that heart beliefs that i also believe now okay let's go on then he say, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Just as Peter quoted. And then he say, uh, then he talk about the good tidings that we bring and stuff like that. And he talk about the strength of God. And then he come in chapter uh, 40 verse 28. And, he, and this he say, have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utter, utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now in this context, that word in the Greek, those who wait upon the Lord. That word in the Greek is almost like a parasite. It gives you the idea of a parasite plant. Uh, I remember in Africa, we, we had parasite plants that, that, that grow into the tree and it begin to live off that tree. It basically sucks the life out of that tree. And they live off that tree from the life that's in that tree. And um, uh, 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 in this context, it means we have to get entwined with God. It means that you get entwined with God. It's the same principle that Jesus used with abide in me and I in you. Same principle. Uh, and we begin to draw from that life. Uh, I want to say to you today, the life that is in the, uh, uh, that is, uh, in, in the vine, that same life is in the branches. So if we abide in him, we begin to draw life and we shall mount up like wings of eagles. We shall run and not get weary. So what is he doing in this context? In this good context, he is showing us that the, the, the battle that mankind had, the war that mankind had with the flesh, trying to live up to a standard, trying to overcome the, 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 the knowledge that comes from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, trying to overcome that all his life. Uh, trying to improve his life. That warfare has come to an end in Christ Jesus. 
the sin nature has been stripped away. The flesh has been, the breath of God have destroyed the power of the flesh on the cross. And now the breath of God through the Holy Spirit is doing the same thing. And he said, and those who wait, those who abide in God will draw strength from him. He will give power to the weak. That's immortality. That's immortality man manifesting. Which is so beautiful. My mortal body has been made alive. Alive unto God and ready to manifest the very power of God. Now, um, and, and that is so, so beautiful. Now, the next thing that I want to, to, to talk to you about and closing down with, and this is this last verse that uh, I want to show you. Are you encouraged yet uh, that you understand about the life of Christ that's in you? I'm very much encouraged by this. Um, but in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1 to 8, the very controversial passage in the Bible, um, and I'm going to take it on, and I'm going to share with you, I share with some other pastors, ask them what is their opinion on it. And uh, let's read it for you. So Paul say here, uh, remember 2 Corinthians 4 is what we shared on last week, that we are not looking at the things that are temporary, but or the things that we've seen, but we look at the things that is not seen, that is in chapter 4. He talk about the, the power, this treasure is in an earthen vessel. And that we put more value in the life and the treasure that is in us. Then it doesn't matter what is coming against us in this world. We are functioning from that which is in us. And the situation that you have is just temporary. And then Paul goes on. And uh, let's read from verse 1. And he says, For we know that our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desire to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in the stand being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who also has given us the spirit as guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body we are absent from the Lord. Now this is what messes us up. Write that verse right there. Verse 7 he says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And we are confident, yes please, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Now, I know that people take that verses and put it in an end time eschatology. I'm not doing that. And I'm not going to go there because the orthodox way of dealing with that passage uh, is that Paul is referring to our physical body being dissolved so that we can live in our internal body, uh, uh, eternal body in God's presence. This is why he used the, the, the earthen vessel uh, as a metaphor in um, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. And in chapter 5, verse 1, that we uh, have this um, uh, uh, tent or this building um, from God. And uh, however, I don't think that Paul was talking about the physical resurrection yet. Uh, because if we read from the beginning of 2 Corinthians, the whole book in its context, then you will understand Paul is not trying to encourage them by a future event that everything will be okay. What Paul is really saying here in chapter 1, um, uh, he says that um, they live by faith, they stand by faith, their yes is their yes and their no is their no. Uh, they live by the faith of Christ which is in there. And chapter 2 he say we diffuse uh, this fragrance of Christ in us. Um, uh, flowing through us. In chapter 3 he talk about the ministry of death and the ministry of life. And he talk about when the veil is removed from our hearts. Um, in chapter 3 we will, we will discover that Christ is in us. And we are transformed into the same image. And I think people miss that when they read these verses. From glory to glory. We move from the glory of the old covenant to the glory of the new covenant. 
And uh, what people never understood is that in 2 Corinthians 3, he says that the ministry of death had glory. The ministry of the Spirit had much more glory. And then he said the ministry of condemnation had glory. The ministry of righteousness exceeds in much more glory. So what, what is he trying to say here to them? He is saying to them that condemnation had a glory. Now what was that glory that was on condemnation? It comes from the law or the ministry of death had a glory. What is the meaning of glory? The, the word glory in the Greek is doxa. It is view and opinion. It's the view and opinion that you get from the view and opinion that you get from God about yourself is good. You are forgiven. You are righteous. You are accepted. That's the view and opinion that you get from God under the, the new covenant. But the view and opinion, the ministry of death is the law. The ministry of condemnation is the law. The view and opinion that comes from it, it brings death. It brings condemnation. The, the mindset on the flesh and the law work through the flesh is death. It's enmity to God. So he says that, that it had a glory. But what glory had it? They could not look into the face of Moses. Why? Because when they look into the face of Moses, it says to them, you are not good enough. And therefore we understand that the law is holy. The law is perfect. But the law was not given for you to obey. The law was given for you to show you that you need a savior. So when they look into the face of Moses, they, they suddenly realize they fall short. They suddenly realize they are condemned. They, they, are, they miss the mark. They are not good enough. So he had to put a veil on his face so that they don't live under that. But now under the new covenant, there is a new glory <laughs> which reveals to us that we are worthy, that we are clothed already with a habitation. That's why Isaiah said, I, I, I rejoice in the Lord. I'm joyful in my God. Because he has clothed me with garments of salvation and covered me with a cloak of righteousness. He saw our day. So what's my point that I want to make here? Is Paul is, when he, when he talk about, uh, in short, if Paul is talking about being at home uh, in the natural realm, it is not our home, it is just temporary. Our real dwelling is the rest that we have in the Lord as we have access by faith into our heavenly home, not made by hands, which is in us. Peter, uh, Paul says you break down, uh, uh, um, excuse me, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Paul says you destroy this, this earthly tent. I have a home, I have a building from God. It is already in us. It's already in us. And he wants to bring the focus back to that. He's not saying um, uh, we, we, we want to be absent from the body and be of the Lord. No, he's talking about the, the, the reality of the life of God is in us. So he says further in that passage, he say, it is to your benefit that I stay in the body. <laughs> I, I would desire to be with God that this body is the time of this body has come to his end. This, this old uh, grass body is now being done away with. Uh, the glory of it has completely come to an end. When Paul says, I have run my race, I've finished my course, my time of departure is here. Paul is not referring to that. He is referring to the reality of death working in us and life in you. That's what he is referring to. He's going, he's referring to 2 Corinthians 4.12. Death working in us and life in you. And that is what it is all about. That is what uh, this whole message of immortality is about. It's not about a future event. It's not being me and you passing the grave. I don't really know what Jesus is going to do in the future. For me, the word that God gave me for 2017 is, you live from the now. Because right now I'm in you. Right now you share in my immortality. You share in my life. Right now you are joined to me and you are one with me. We are in union with God. So I honestly believe that when the church begin to grasp this reality, living the higher calling that is in Christ, then we will begin to see how the church being illuminated 
and how power begin to manifest in our midst, Christ begin to manifest, and that He will be glorified. And the, 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 the whole creation, creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God in this earth. I believe that this message has blessed you today. Um, God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you.